This guide is for your Sajidi and sleeping in the Dragon Soul Instance 10 man normal mode. At the time of creating this guide, the fight was done on the PTR realm, and as such, the fight mechanics may change before the actual 4.3 release date. Our raid composition consisted of one tank, three healers, and six DPS. You want a balanced mix of melee and ranged DPS, and for healers, you may be able to two heal this fight depending on your current gear level. Yorsage is a one phase encounter and has two main abilities throughout the fight. The first ability is called Void Bolt. Void Bolt hits the primary target with moderate shadow damage initially, then mild shadow damage every two seconds. The second ability that Yorsage casts is Call Blood of Shuma. Call Blood of Shuma is the primary raid mechanic that your raid is going to have to deal with for Yorsage. Every now and then he will spawn three Bloods of Shumas, each of a different color. These different colors give different abilities to Yorsaj if they reach him. The goal of this is to kill one blood and let the other two bloods hit Yorsaj, thus giving him two different abilities. Let's talk about some of the abilities that Yorsaj will receive. The yellow globule is called a glowing globule. Upon reaching Yorsaj, it'll empower Yorsaj's void bolt to hit all nearby targets instead of just one. Yorsaj will also use his abilities twice as often and his attack speed will increase by 50%. The blue blood is called a Cobalt Globule. Upon reaching Yorsaj, shortly after he will spawn a Mana Void, which is a new mob. This mob does not need to be tanked. What this mob will do is it'll drain the mana from all your casters and healers in the raid, storing the mana within itself. This needs to be DPS hard. Upon destroying the Mana Void, it evenly returns the total mana leech from all players to everyone within 18 yards. The red blood is called a Crimson Globule. Upon reaching Yorsaj, this will empower Yorsaj with Searing Blood. Searing Blood will inflict moderate fire damage to all targets in the raid. The further the target stands from Yorsaj, the greater the shock received from the blast. Essentially, you want to be as close as Yorsaj as possible to minimize the damage. The Black Blood is called a Dark Globule. Upon reaching Yorsaj, this will allow Yorsaj to spawn several Forgotten Ones. Forgotten Ones fixate on a random target and deal mild shadow damage called Psychic Slice. These basically need to be AoE down or burned down one at a time if your raid is spread apart. The Green Blood is called Acidic Globule. Upon reaching Yorsaj, this will empower him with Digestive Acid, which does moderate nature damage to all players and any nearby allies within 4 yards. It's important that if a green blood gets to your Saj, you are at least 4 yards spread apart from each other in order to minimize the damage done. And finally, the purple blood is called a Shadowed Globule. Upon reaching your Saj, the Shadowed Globule will empower your Saj with Deep Corruption. Deep Corruption hits every player, and every 5th healing or absorption effect cast on the player will trigger a violent detonation inflicting moderate shadow damage to all players. As mentioned earlier, you're going to be killing one blood at a time. This is due to fusing vapors. When one globule dies, the surviving globules completely fuse and gain immunity to all forms of damage. This fight is all about knowing the abilities of each blood as it hits your Saj and reacting to those abilities depending on the color. Your raid leader will need to call out which blood to kill. The priority that we used in our raid was to kill purple first, green second, and yellow third in the priority list. Some color combinations can be easy to deal with, while others can be a bit of a pain due to the amount of adds that spawn. Red is an example of a color that is very easy to deal with due to your need to stack on top of your Saj. Red with black, kill down the adds and AoE them down. Red with blue, when the Mana Void spawns, tank needs to pull your Saj over to the Mana Void and burn down that Mana Void. Red with yellow will cause more damage done to your raid, which your healer should be prepared for. There are also no adds to kill during this combination, so bloodlust during this time. Red and green is a very rare combination that can be difficult to deal with, but as long as your raid is smart about spreading out 4 yards away from each other and being as close to your Saj as possible, you should still be able to heal through it. Healing cooldowns should be used during this combination. There are many other combinations that your raid may encounter during this fight. For time's sake, I won't be covering every single combination. However, I do have some tips for very specific colors. For the blue blood, it's important to remember that you need to be within 18 yards of the mana void upon its death to get your mana back. If you have a green color and a blue color, you don't need to hug the mana void. You just need to spread out within 4 yards of each other and be within 18 yards of that mana void. 
Yellow generally will result in higher damage done to your raid. Healers, be ready for this. If you have black and blue spawned together, it's important to kill the mana void first so that the mana users have enough mana to heal and kill the rest of the adds down. It is very possible that if you have a black combination up, Forgotten Ones may still be up by the time the next blood spawn. It's important to kill the first blood and then finish off the Forgotten Ones. Bloodlust and Heroism should be used on any phase where there are no adds. That way full DPS can be focused on the boss. Strong execution and adjustment to the blood's mechanics will result in a very easy kill on this boss. He's not really all that difficult. I hope you enjoyed this guide and good luck with the encounter.